I wanted to start with a quick lesson on what the difference between an Arduino and a regular naked microcontroller is. Now, some of you who have been working with Arduino or microcontrollers for a while probably already know this. Maybe it's a good review for you. But if you're new to Arduino microcontrollers or programming, you may be wondering what the difference between an Arduino and a regular standalone or naked microcontroller is. And this is what we're going to talk about. So open source electronics trainer boards like the Arduino, Raspberry Pi, BeagleBone, among others, have been an enormous boon to introducing more people to electronics and science. This is because they make working with microcontrollers and programming easier by way of abstraction. The popularity of these boards has exploded over the past decade or so. In the past, if you wanted to use a microcontroller in your projects, you had to work directly with the microcontroller. Supporting hardware, you had to program in either C or BASIC, and a host of other things got in the way. Be that as it may, there are reasons why you should still consider working directly with a naked or standalone microcontroller. Now, to keep it simple, we'll stick with comparing the Arduino Uno to the microcontroller that powers it, the ATmega328. The Arduino Uno consists of a microcontroller, also known as an MCU, circled in red here, and various supporting components like a voltage regulator, the crystal, and more. Just like your brain is part of your whole body, the MCU, or microcontroller, is the brains behind the board and is part of it. Often, trainers like the Arduino are referred to as ecosystems. An ecosystem consists of the board and the Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. A microcontroller is simply one of the components on the trainer. It is not an ecosystem in and of itself, but things like supporting hardware and IDEs are readily available. They're just not wrapped up as neatly as they are in the Arduino ecosystem. So for example, when working with a naked microcontroller, you'll need to supply the regulator, capacitors, and other components. You also need a compatible IDE, which you can often download for free. For years, electronics enthusiasts did things this way and worked with standalone microcontrollers like the PIC or AVR. Then along came the Arduino with the purpose of helping students and non-engineers create things, learn, and control their world. Other similar ecosystems or platforms soon followed. So let's start comparing the two. As of this writing, the prices for some trainers range from $24.95 for the Uno on the low end to $55 on the high end for the BeagleBone Black. A Raspberry Pi 3 Model B will set you back about $40. Now, the Raspberry Pi and BeagleBone are technically fully functional Linux-based computers, so they're a little bit different than the Arduino but I just want to throw those out there for comparison's sake. Since the Arduino boards seem to be among the most popular of the trainers, we're just going to focus on them. Now, the ATmega328P that shipped that powers the Arduino Uno lists for less than $2 in quantities of one from some vendors. If you're going to buy a higher quantity, like 10 or more, the price drops even more. Trainers like the Arduino and friends are great for learning and prototyping projects. But if you plan on actually keeping your creation for a while, a naked microcontroller might be better. And here's why. Let's say I want to build a widget to assist me in parking my car in a sweet spot in my garage. The hanging tennis ball is too easy and too unelegant, so I decide to grab my Arduino and go to town. When finished, the gadget works beautifully and I want to keep it. The problem now is I have to drop another 25 bucks on another Arduino for my next project, or I have to cannibalize my helpful parking assistant. Another difference is size. The Arduino Uno measures 55 millimeters by 75 millimeters. The microcontroller on the Uno only measures 10 millimeters by 35 millimeters. If you were to take your DVR or smartphone apart, you wouldn't find an Arduino or Raspberry Pi inside. You would find several microcontrollers, though. Things are not produced with trainer boards in the real world. One reason for this is cost. So if you ever wanted to get crazy and say, hack your toaster, you may have to work with a microcontroller inside. You could even replace the factory MCU with one containing your own firmware. Now, most of us probably won't hack our own toaster, but the idea can be extended to a lot of gadgets. Another difference between the Arduino and other microcontrollers is the Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. From now on, we'll just refer to this as IDE, because it's a lot easier to say. The Arduino IDE is a great tool to get you started with embedded systems and programming. This is because to make learning simple, the designers have hidden a lot of detail and functionality behind layers of abstraction 
many of which come in the form of libraries. For example, in programming in C, there usually isn't a built-in digital write function like there is with Arduino, unless you write your own version, of course. The libraries make doing things like reading the temperature of a sensor, which is an analog value, much easier for middle schoolers and electronics newbies. Boards like the Arduino, Raspberry Pi, and Beagle are great for learning and prototyping. It may seem intimidating at first, but eventually you'll be doing things you couldn't do before with your creations.